Hello, everyone. My name is Sam Achampong. I'm the regional head for the Chartered Institute of Procurement and Supply, SIPS, for the Middle East and North Africa. Welcome to the session from wherever you are logging in around the world. We've got an interesting subject today, agile procurement. And I think everywhere I go these days, that's the question that's on most people's lips. Agile procurement, what is it? What does it mean? How does it work? So today we have a fantastic guest who's going to take us through exactly what that is. Now, as we go through the session, if anyone has any questions, please use the Q&A box um, at the top or at the bottom of your screen, type in your question, and we will make sure that we allocate enough time at the end of the session to answer all of your questions. So before, without further ado, rather, I'd like to introduce my guest. Um, we have Suleiman Abdullah, who's the head of procurement for TDRA, which is the Telecommunications and Digital Government Regulatory Authority in the UAE. Suleiman, over to you. Thank you, Sam. Uh, I hope the screen is clear, uh, um, Sam. It's clear. Go yeah, ahead. thank you very much. Today, I will be taking you through an important element or subject we, talked, we talk about every time, agility and procurement. We all know the future is agile and dynamic and faster. So I hope you will be enjoying the session and this will add value and knowledge to yourself. Why do we need agility? Why do we need a dynamic sourcing? That's an important question we need to ask ourselves. A recent um, uh, study published by Gartner, it says that 65% of enterprises accelerated the pace of digital business initiatives in 2022. So more than 50% of companies are really accelerating and investing in digital transformation. 8.2 months take the enterprises as an average to contract and outsource service providers. So almost nine months it takes organization to onboard a supplier. 50% of sourcing engagement will fail to meet expectation for cost efficiency, agility, and transformation by 2024. The reason, lack of collaboration between the stakeholders. So it's very important to adopt agility in our procurement process and operation. This is a survey and the results of the survey. And the, and the, the Gartner survey, they have mentioned an average timeline of purchase process stages taken by a government response. Sorry for that. For each stage, the dark blue states the initially exploring options to engage with providers. The light blue states the engaging with the first potential provider to choosing a winning provider. And the light green states choosing a winning provider to signing the contract. And the blow is the timeline average and the scale. One month, one to three, three to six, six to nine, nine to 12, 12 to 15, 15 to 18 and 18 months. If you see the average says that it takes nine months almost nine months, and we have seen that in the, in the first slide or second slide, takes the enterprise to onboard a supplier. So ask yourself a question. What is the timeline taken by your organization? So what is agility? Agile means the shortest sustainable lead time. Again, we have to Focus on the word is not only the shortest, shortest, sustainable, should sustain. 
So the shortest sustainable lead time between business requirements and benefits realization. So the keywords also here is benefits realization because for procurement is not sometimes, you know, the, the value you, you receive is in a spot. No, sometimes it takes years to realize the value from procurement. In more simpler words, agile means how flexible, how resilient is your organization when it comes to face the challenges in the market and disruption. This is a comparison between a tra traditional procurement and agile procurement as published in Gartner. Traditional procurement always engage based on a process, so they are process focused. When it comes to agile procurement, it's focused more on collaboration. The second point, the requirements in traditional procurement will document it, including technical and functional and commercial stage. However, when it comes to agile procurement, is is mainly based on user stories, which focus on objectives. What's your business objectives? What's outcomes you would like to achieve? Your KPIs and the value. In traditional procurement, you're evaluating based on rating, weight and ranking, and you rate based on the technical or commercial uh, proposal that you receive. However, when it comes to agile procurement, the evaluation based on evidences, POC, POC stand of proof of concept. So you really would like to demonstration, to see the demonstration of the system, for example, in order to, to select appropriate supply. The due diligence performed at the end of the process, where the due diligence in the agile procurement involved in the entry criteria. So you are engaging all the stakeholders at the early as possible in your process. And it's based on the competitive co-design defined technical solution and process to achieve the outcomes. So in summary, agile procurement, it's about collaboration. You engage your stakeholders as early as possible in your process. And the selection is based on which of these supplier provide you the best solution based on your statement, your problem, your objectives, your main KPIs that you would like to achieve. Three different terminologies. I would like to clarify what each of them means. Digital procurement basically means managing your category, the digital category, the digital product and services. So it's category management. Procurement digitalization means automating your procure to pay, P2P cycle. However, when you are developing a procurement digital transformation roadmap, you need to focus in different areas, starting from a strategy, business model, your people, your process, and the system. To adapt agility, you need to focus on these five main pillars, points, as, as mentioned by Gartner, first people, second process, third tools and technology, and the fourth organization culture, and the fifth is supplier relationship. These must be supported by a clear strategy and excellence program. However, one of, one or of these components, people is the most important focus area. We always talk about technology. Yes, technology is a, crit a critical enabler of excellence in procurement. However, it is meaningless if you don't have skilled people there to make use of it. So let's take an example. If you don't have a competent people, eventually they will select the technology that doesn't serve the organization and the technology will be implemented based on a legacy process. So you cannot only focus on technology and don't focus on people. So the five pillars here 
you need to focus on them if you would like to have an agile business model within the organization. The reason I, I, I highlighted people and supplier relationship, most of us tend to not focus on the last element when it comes to supplier relationship. Now we are talking about supplier collaboration. We know that 50% of innovative ideas comes from internal team. However, the rest comes from the suppliers. They have their focus in the services that they're providing. Always discuss and talk to them and collaborate with them if you would like to have new ideas, improve process and procedure and systems. I, I, I try to give you, simplify the, the meaning of collaboration and cooperation. Most of us may be misled by the terminologies. We cooperate maybe every day with, with our team. On the left side, I have put the teams in different orange. For, exa for example, project team, procurement team, legal team, and finance team. And at the end, supplier provide the services. So, so this is a basically a, a structured way of team cooperating each other. However, in a collaborative approach, is more about collaboration, agile approach for organization teams, where you gather yourself in a smaller team to conduct pre procurement from the initial stage of identify the requirement selection process and contracting to address a specific objective. So it's the key word is you have an objective, you have a statement of your problem where you need to solve and you have a key KPI and outcomes to achieve. So collaboration is really key when it comes to drive agility within your operation. Nine key future digital skills supply chain leaders should focus on based on Gartner study. They have classified in three main pillars, technical skills, business skills, and behavior. In technical skills, we need procurement professional more and supply chain professional more to be aware about technology tools and apps. You need to know a bit of technology tools. You also need to equip yourself with advanced analytics, analytical thinking. You need to use data and information to drive decision, which is already mentioned here in the business skills. And business skills, cross-functional collaboration is very important. We have mentioned the collaboration importance to drive value. Data-driven decision-making. Today, everything is all about data. We need to have data and information, and our decision should be based on the data. What's more important is the quality of the information and data that we have in our system. Process improvement and project management, it's all about project. We have to consider any issues, any problems that we have as a project. So project management skill is very important. And every enhancement that you have, it counts. So always think about how to enhance your process. Last part is customer and commercial understanding. The more you're close to your customers, the more you will be understanding them, the more you can fulfill their requirement. Last pillar is the behavior. One of the important skills is leadership skills. I always say that it's all about leadership. Leadership does not mean that you need to be a leader or in a managerial position to practice leadership. Lead yourself. So leadership skill is very important. It contains communication skills, influencing skills, so many things. So leadership skills is very important if you would like to drive value to your organization. Adaptability and risk-taking. You need to take risk, but educated risk based on the data that you have in your system. And be adaptable to change. COVID-19, I think, was a real example of 
how organization were forced to change and adapt to the new norm. Last one, be innovative and creative. And as I mentioned in my previous slide, always take the supplier as a key pillar, a strong pillar that you always discuss and collaborate with them to bring with, with, with new ideas and creative ideas to improve your process or business model or even change it. I'll share with you, as I discussed, the leadership is very important skill. Goldman six leadership styles. It's six styles, but I have summarized it in five to simplify my explanation. Commanding, visionary, affiliative, democratic, and coaching. Let's talk about the command. Commanding style, basically do what I'm telling you to do. It's just a command. When we use it in crisis, or we would like to correct a situation, what is impact on people? It's a negative impact because you're just commanding them without taking their, their feedback. When it comes to visionary, the style is always about come with me. We have a dream. We would like the team to come with me. When we use it, the new vision and the impact is always positive. And we are proud in UAE to have an example of a visionary leader, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid. The third style is affiliative. Basically, the style is putting people first. When we use it, when we are trying to heal situation or try to support your team. And the impact is also positive. Democratic. When we use it as a style, when you are trying to get people to think with you, like brainstorming. When we use it to get the buy-in from the team and the impact always positive. Coaching is the style when we try to share and help people to try new things. And when we use it, if we're trying or would like to improve a process or a business or operation, and the impact always positive. So ask yourself a simple question. Which of this style do you think is the best style? Just think for a moment. Which do you think is is the best style of this leadership. The answer, the answer is there is no one style that you can apply or you need to apply. You need to have all these leadership styles based on the situation that you are facing and apply the appropriate style that you think it's appropriate. So assess yourself. If you think yourself using some of them and ignoring others, develop yourself. However, commanding style shouldn't exceed your 10% of your overall styles. So your 90% should be among all of these and 10% only on commanding style. Why? Because commanding only is being used when in crisis or you need to correct a situation. Let me just go to the next slide. I think I have one. Okay. Let me ask this question and uh, the team will, will help you, you know, to show the question. Do you think is leadership is learnable? Please answer the questions. We will have a small discussion after you answer the question. So do you think leadership is something you can learn or uh, you are born with? Is it a skill can be taught or is a character that you're born with? 
will give you a minute to answer the question. That's great. We have almost 91% people agreeing. Yes, it's learnable skills. And we have 9% saying no. Simon Sinek had demonstrated it very well. He talks about leadership. It's a, 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 a learnable skills. However, not every leader would like to be a leader. And not every leader can be a leader. So he's given an example of parenting that every parent or every people had the capacity to be a parent, but not all would like to be a parent and not all can be a parent. And the reason it comes to leadership because leadership requires sacrifice. So yes, it can be taught, but not everyone would like to be in leadership position for a simpler reason that it really requires sacrifice. Let's talk about cost versus value. What's the value of procurement can add? So the value of procurement, this is an important slide to understand what is procurement. Procurement is not always about buying. It's not about buying. Procurement can add value instead of buying, maybe leasing. Or maybe instead of leasing or buying, we're building a solution internally by using our internal resources. Or even not building or leasing or buying, let's invest in acquiring a company, for example. So procurement can help in this process. At the end, simply avoid buying which we ignore most of the time. So procurement is not always about buying in a simple or simpler language. By avoiding buying something, you can add value. And the only way you can bring value by understanding the whole process. This is the value we're talking about the procurement. So it's not about cost only. This is the second slide. I would like to highlight some of the points I have captured, the value of procurement versus when we think or the business focus on cost. Remember, if you focus on cost, procurement demand with cost saving alone will be its biggest downfall. Be careful. We are not saying cost is not important, but it should not be your first priority. I'll just go through what are some of the values procurement can add. Customer satisfaction, whether internally or external customers. Procurement is a service provider to the organization. Procurement is an enabler. So you need, as a, pro a procurement professional, to think procurement as a service provider. Go with the service provider mindset to serve people. ROI stands for return for investment. Waste reduction. When I'm talking about the waste, I'm not only referring to the hard waste. I'm talking about the e-waste. I'm talking about the waste that you have in your operation, the time that it's getting waste. Reuse and recycle of materials. Always encourage you reusing of your system, reusing of your product. There where you can add value. It's not about only buying whatever I get. Focus on health and safety is very important. So it's not about cost. Health and safety is important. Sustainability, which focus on three main items. Environment, social, economy. Security and assurance. One of the stories recently I have seen one of the suppliers because of the lack of due diligence and, and appliance security measures, their website is being hacked. And it's a well-known company. So 
you need to focus also on security assurance and compliance they are applying as a company. So it's not about cost. Quality, an important element, the quality of product. You don't go cheap. And we are not talking about lowering the, the, the product with the least price, always not better. But you don't focus on the price. Focus on the comparison and the quality of the product. That's the most important. Even you need to pay with extra amount. But the quality is more important because of the reprocessing, you know, when it comes to um, buying a product and defects and these things. Risk, a major factor. Innovation. Procurement can play an important role, honestly, to bring innovative ideas because they have the partners beside them. Today, procurement, they manage the suppliers so they can bring on the table the innovative ideas that the supplier is sharing with them. So you need to have a good framework with your partners and supplier. Speed. Now, everybody's talking about speed. A simple example is whether you go with the vendor who can provide you with the product with the lesser price after a month or with the higher price with the three days or four days or one week. A brand, my recent discussion, I was talking to someone else, we were talking about the contribution of procurement to the brand of the organization is key. Imagine you are onboarding a supplier not competent to the regulation and not complying with the regulation and, and processes and policies. Any damage he does will affect the brand of the organization. So we really add value when it comes to protecting the brand of the organization. Cost avoidance, a simple uh, answer. Just avoid spending if you don't need the product or the services. So don't put cost as the first element, priority when it comes to procurement. Procurement, these are some of the values that the procurement can bring on the table to the organization. Procurement value levels. There are different value levels when it comes to procurement. Comply levels, demand levels, process levels source levers, fulfill levers, and manage levers. And I will take you with some of the examples under each pillar. In comply levers, spend governance is important. Compliance governance is important. Budget governance is important. When it comes to demand levers, eliminate demand is important. Review quantity. How many items you are buying? Do you need all of them? Reduce frequency. Make a framework agreements with the suppliers. Minimize the frequency of your operation. Standardize specification so you can simplify your buying process. Reduce portfolios. Consider alternatives. Don't fall in love with one supplier. Always have a plan B and plan C. Encourage reuse, as I mentioned in my previous slide. And process levers, type of sourcing events, cycle time is very important. It's all about the time that you take to process a request. Prioritize your projects is all about priorities, buying channels, and consider sourcing from original equipment manufacturer. Source levers, bundle, unbundle, combine your buying process. Supplier rationalization is very important to minimize your operation, transactional process. Volume or time commitment. Pricing mechanism, performance or benefits, incentives, risk allocation, and payment terms. Fulfill levers, demand supply balancing, ordering physical delivery, storage and distribution, 
contract compliance, repair and replacement, transaction cost. When it comes to manage levels, manage your procure to pay, manage your variations, and some of the organization, they limit the variation to 30%. They should not exceed 30% of the total contract value. Manage your risk is not once. We're talking about every project should have a risk register and should be managed and monitored. Manage the performance of your suppliers and value delivery. What's important, key point I need to highlight is most of the organization always focus about compliance. Sorry for this. Always think about compliance. Compliance is only one pillar of the value that procurement can drive. All these values procurement can bring to the organization if we really have a good roadmap when it comes to people, process, and technology. Then common mistakes in procurement, falling in love with a single partner. We always hear about, you know, teams saying that we cannot change this partner because, you know, they are very good. Yes, we're not talking about here strategic partners. However, you, al you always need to have alternatives. Believing that anyone can do procurement role. Not everyone can do procurement role. You need competent people. You need people who knows what is procurement. Thinking buying is always a solution. We have mentioned in the beginning that it's not about buying. You have different uh, levels or points you can add to bring value, either investing, avoid buying, or maybe leasing, or maybe building. Failing to devote enough time to testing process. This is important for the, you know, when we buy technology, one of the important elements when buying technology, we have a phase called go live. Before we go live, we need to test the system. So you need to spend time enough to test the solution before you go live. Not engaging all stakeholders, a big mistake. You have to engage all stakeholders as early as possible. Wasting time on transactional project. We have mentioned that it's all about priorities. The simpler task can be delegated or you can use the system to optimize it. So focus on the complex, the project that add value. The more you have transactional process, you're not adding value to the organization. Failing to monitor supplier performance and feedback is very important. You sit regularly with your supplier, assess their performance, and take their feedback to improve. Ignoring the sustainability and security impact. I think the recent uh, survey published by, by Gartner says that more than 65% of companies intending to only deal with the suppliers who really have a strong sustainable sustainability framework to so focus on that using the wrong metrics to measure value and achievement as i mentioned the value of procurement is not about how much cost they reduce it's about the value sometimes i see organization they have a fixed defined kpi every year you have to reduce the cost 10% or 20%. And we are talking about inflation rate is increasing. And real scenarios about the value that procurement can add is COVID-19. In COVID-19, price was not the first priority for any organization. Is how do we how we ensure the product is available. The speed and availability of the product was more important. Treating procurement as a simpler task replication. If organizations think procurement only about 
processes and tasks, then it's a mistake. Procurement, if they apply the procurement principle, the framework, the best practices, can bring a lot of values to the organization. Total cost of ownership. Total cost of ownership. I have taken um, a category of IT services. I'll just go quickly about what you need to consider when you're talking about calculating the total cost of ownership and services strategy, the cost of discover BA and SABA stand for business analyst and SA is system architect. So you need to consider their cost. In designing stage, consider the design cost, consider the POC cost, and consider the contract development cost. And service transaction, consider the cost of setup, consider the cost of per perpetual license, consider the cost of hardware, consider the cost of deployment, consider the cost of cloud services, the cost of integration, the cost of migration, the cost of testing. Also consider the cost of project management and cost of knowledge management and training and cost of change management and cost of legacy platform decommissioning. And last part, and service operation, consider the cost of software rental. You need to consider also the cost of changing request that comes, you know, when you are, when you are changing the product. Cost of support, whether it's third party or doing in-house. Cost of maintenance and upgrades. Cost of asset management. End of life cost, cost of retirement and replacement. So when you are having a decision to be made to calculate the cost of a product, consider, uh, I, I, I just give an example of an IT as a category, consider all this cost when you are calculating the total cost of ownership. Top KPIs for supply chain management as published by Gartner is cost, is a main element, total cycle time, uh, life, total cycle time and total delivered cost, customer service, you always need to focus on customer experiences and deliver full delivery once, and sustainability, where you focus on wasting your, reducing your waste, net zero emission, try to push for reuse and recycle approaches. Always important to focus on sustainability, which become now the important point to focus on. Dynamic sourcing, RFS, request for solution. Based on Gartner recent survey, the dynamic sourcing is an important, important way of sourcing. As I mentioned in the beginning, it's agile procurement where you need to collaborate all your stakeholders here by defining your objective. And the way you can define your object objective is by asking these kind of questions. Why, what, who, where, and how, when? Why do we need this service? Who are we going to serve? How we can implement this? And you need in this stage to collaborate with your suppliers and stakeholders internally, finance, legal, IT, HR if necessary, and your suppliers. The second phase they're highlighting is shortlisting the service provider in 90 minutes. You should have pre-qualified suppliers identified and you need to go through, through this process. At the end, you use these four steps where you set up and prepare your RFS, request a solution, where you put your terms and condition, your problem statement, your context, your KPIs, and the value. And then in the second stage and third stage, you sit with your predefined, pre-qualified supplier to give you the best, uh, the best understanding of your problem. And then what is the value you're getting here? 
at the end of at the end you will be getting not one solution as you are defining no you are getting many solution from different vendors which have an an innovation element in every solution which sometimes you did not consider where you if you go with the tactical rfps and rfi process at the end you select the best appropriate supplier can bring value to yourself examples of dynamic sourcing this is also being published by gartner one of the companies really called i think where poor corporation use dynamic sourcing and the value they have, they have achieved is 90 percent of sales and manufacturing capacity in one single erp instant reduced contractor cost by 30 percent increased cloud privilege by 50 percent another scenario is nokia almost 500 million you know worth of saving reduce the cost almost 50 percent accelerated transition and transformation simplified operating model this is something we have also applied in tedra the old process about smart or business card paper-based business card used to go from hr to procurement to procurement and users and then procurement to suppliers we have applied once only principle where the users can just go to the internal application within three clicks they can share their business card information to any party now this is really the interesting phase i would say in my presentation i would like everyone to think about his mobile device without focusing on the brand. Just think about the phone that you have. Just think about the phone without any comparison to any different brands, just your phone. And answer this question. Do you think your phone is expensive? And you have three choice. Yes, no, affordable. We'll give you some some time just think about your phone without comparing it to any other brand what do you think is your phone expensive without any comparison So we have 53% saying that their phone is expensive and we have 11% saying no. And we have 37% people saying it's affordable. That sounds interesting. Now, let's go to this page. I want you, before focusing on the phone, let's focus on this phone and the surrounding equipment used to be there before we innovate this device. We used to have a fax machine where we receive and we send letters. We used to have a landline for calling our neighbors, our friends, our families. We used to have a calendar, manual calendar. We used to have a recorder you know, taking with us the recorder. We used to have separate camera. We used to have a radio. I still remember some, some, some folks taking the radios, uh, uh, you know, on their shoulder. Alarm, a notebook. So by just thinking about this piece of device helped us to eliminate all these equipments, that's one and the space to allocate or the space being utilized by these equ equipments imagine fax is taking space a landline is taking space a calendar is taking space 
the space used to be allocated by these devices. Plus, think about the recycling process that you need to do if you have all these equipments and all of them is disappeared by just innovating this piece of device. Now, after this demonstration, I want you, same question. Do you still think your phone is expensive? Now think about all the equipment. Think about the space that being utilized. Think about what you're gonna do if you have all those equipments from recycling perspective, moving it, if you can move it, all of them, if you have all these devices. So answer the question. Do you still think your phone is expensive? This is really great. Now, 18% saying yes. However, majority of people saying no. This is a clear demonstration of what procurement is all about. Procurement don't think about the product cost only. We always think about total cost of ownership and total value that the service can bring on the table. These are some of the action points, you know, as a take through, you can, you know, go through it, um, which can add value to the organization, automating your process, communication skills, lean thinking, calculate the total cost of ownership, Six Sigma training, SIPS corporate practitioner program, focus on customer journey, always apply one's principle to simplify the process to the customer, collaboration is key, Subscribe and research tools. Emotional intelligence is very important to drive leadership skills. Five ways approach. Always ask why you are doing this work in this way so you can improve the process. Finally, I leave you with this thought. If you are doing the same job in the same way for more than three months, you're not improving. So think always about how to improve yourself, your process, your technology by equipping yourself with the leadership skills and communication skills. Thank you very much. The mic to you, uh, uh, Sam. Fantastic, Suleiman. Thank you so much for that. Some great insights. And um, really, what, what a great subject. I think you've answered most of the questions in your presentation that have been asked in the Q&A. So well done for that and thanks for your contribution. But I will, in the time we've got, uh, go through to some of the questions. We've got the, the, the remaining questions uh, for the people who have asked them. So uh, one of the questions we got uh, here from Gopal was, um, is agile procurement a top-down approach or are there ways of influencing the bottom-up approach in this type of procurement? In other words, is it is it something that can only be influenced by leadership or has every is, has everybody got a part to play? Thank you very much. Good questions. And I think in one of the slides, I have mentioned the organization culture. And I think leadership really pl play, you know, um, our leaders play an important role to create that culture. However, this is a challenge for us. This is how we say we are different. You as a leader in procurement, you need to drive this change. You also can, from bottom to up, drive this value. So basically, it's both way now. You can drive the value and change from yourself to up. You don't wait, um, you know, for, for leadership to push you for that. You know, you can start by yourself. Great answer. And I tend to agree with that as well. You're not waiting for leaders to make decisions. We've all got a part to play. And that's what leads to, to agile procurement. You're right. Another question. Uh, that's come in. Um, is there a balance between agility and compliance? I always say this phrase, uh, Sam, uh, is if you would like to follow the policy and procedure, that's maybe the easiest part when it comes to procurement uh, professional. However, what differentiates you if you're trying to 
bring value is to legalize the process. So you need to balance between agile procurement and how to comply with the process. I'll give an example very briefly in COVID-19. Most of the organization who had emergency procurement process were able to apply agile procurement. So if you don't have uh, an emergency procurement policy or process embedded within your process, so what will happen is in case of disaster or crisis, you will not be able to apply the agile. So yes, you can balance by having your process flexible, train your, your team how to think flexible, how to be resilient, and always have your system flexible if you would like to have changes. Right, another great answer. I think that, that really touches the point of the subject there. Another question coming in, and I'm um, looking at the times, so I'm trying to get as many in as possible. So is it possible to apply agile procurement techniques uh, without um, implementing digital solutions? It's very hard. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Sam, in my one of the presentation, he, one of the important skills is data-driven decision. You need to have an information. You need to have a data embedded in the system. I always say that there are four phases. If you are still paper-based, you still use a paper-based process, you need to automate it. Then you go to digitalization. Then you can use artificial intelligence. If you don't have an information or system to to you know to grab the data, so it's very hard for you to be agile because you will not be able to take a decision. So agility comes from the information that's available in the system. However, if you're building a roadmap of automation or digitalization, you need to focus on three main elements. So it's not only technology, people, technology, and the process. So, and, and that's a good way to wrap it up, really, because, yeah, the compliance element, um, the digitization, in other words, the systems and utilizing those systems all add to you being able to become agile from what you're saying, Suleiman, well encapsulated. And I think I'll go to the um, last question, bearing in mind the time we have. Um, what would you say is um, the best way to measure the value add from a procurement function or from a procurement individual's role? A uh, simple answer, you just need to share your achievement. You, you need to communicate whatever you achieve to management and to your team and to leadership. Most of the procurement professionals, maybe we see that we tend to be in the back office. You know, we do our role and we sit and we don't communicate to our stakeholders, whether internally or externally, about the value we bring. So report it, announce your achievement, talk about it, communicate with your stakeholders. Then they will realize the value that you bring. I call all of this, it's like branding your function. You, know, you need to brand your function. Think about it as a, as, as a house when you are branding and decorating your room. You need to brand it. And the way to brand it is to communicate about it your achievements, your KPIs, whatever you have done, report it and communicate it. I think brand is very important, I would agree. And finally, um, I guess a good question to end on will be this. Is agile procurement really a new thing or are we really talking about applying best practice in a digital age? Thank you. This is a really a good question and I think but we always say this, technology is revolving sound. And uh, whatever is suits us, you know, before one month, after six months, it might not suit us. Now, we have organization is still using paper-based process. And we are in a, in a stage we are talking about metaverse. So what, what we talk about agile procurement, it's, it's a mindset rather than it's only technology. It's a process rather than it's only, you know, uh, a system. So agile procurement is all about how flexible you are. We will face disruption, Sam. Uh, disruption is coming. 
So how agile and flexible you are to face these challenges, you know, and make sure that your organization does not affect as much as possible. We know the stories of organization they, in COVID-19, they have shift their product line from producing electronics to producing, uh, you know, the, the mask in COVID-19. See how agile was their system. So I, I, think, that's, I, I think that's a great example of, of inbuilt agility organizations yeah. who, who are manufacturing a particular item. And the agility is they're able to switch their manufacturing line yeah. in the face of, well, in that case, a global pandemic. Yeah. Uh, so, Laman, I think you've, you've you've encapsulated the subject very well. You've explained it extraordinarily well. Um, thank you for coming along. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for everyone who who attended. Thanks for your questions. I hope you found it useful. We will make the uh, the presentation available to to all of you who've attended, and also a recording of this session as well. Agile procurement. We finally know the answer. So, Laman, thank you very much. Thank you to everyone else who attended, and we'll catch you at the next session. Take care. Take care. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, everyone.